Hi everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about how you can use inline functions with your classes in C++. We'll talk about the syntax for an inline function and we'll talk about the pros and cons of using inline functions. So let's go ahead and get started by declaring a class that we'll call square. And in this class, we'll have one private member variable, which we'll call side for storing the length of the side of the square. And then we'll include as part of the public interface, three functions. The first function will be a mutator, and that's going to be a function just to set the side variable. So we'll say void set side, and that's going to accept a single double as an argument. And then for our accessors, we'll have a function that will return that will get the side and return it. We're gonna label it const since it's an accessor. And then we're gonna have get area, which will simply calculate and return the area of the square. So let's go ahead and declare our set side function. So we're gonna say void, and then it belongs to the square class. We need the scope resolution operator. And then the name of the function set side. Gonna have a single parameter for accepting the length of the side of the square as its only argument. So inside of here, we're gonna start off by adding some uh, input validation code. So that way we can ensure that the square object will never be able to have a non-positive value in its side variable. So how are we gonna do that? We're simply going to have an if statement and we're gonna say, well, if S is greater than zero. In other words, if the argument passed to set side is positive, then we will go ahead and update the side variable with the argument. Otherwise, we'll just kill the program, okay? So that'll be a fatal error and we're gonna say, nope, we're done. Now, if we're gonna use that exit function, we gotta make sure that we include cstidlib, and this is for exit. Now, so as it turns out for our two accessors, they're gonna be really simple functions. So because of that, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to declare them as inline functions. Now we don't need to do any kind of keyword. There's no inline keyword that we need to use here. To declare them inline, all we have to do is declare them within the class declaration. So if we place the entire function declaration inside the class declaration, then that function is going to be inline, right? So these are gonna be inline. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply define the function. So this is gonna return side, so that function's done. And then get area is simply gonna return side squared. So return side times side, All right? So that's it. These are now inline functions. These are inline. And then the this one right here, the set side function is not. Now, what a lot of programmers like to do, myself included, is since this is so simple, just eliminate this whole block here and move it up to here. So do something like that instead. And that's totally fine. That's purely a preference, a stylistic choice, but I like it, so I'm doing it. You do it however you like to do it. So then it just makes it a little bit more compact. The class declaration makes it look a little nicer. So let's go ahead and test out our class. So we'll instantiate an instance of the square, and then we'll set its side to something like 1.1, sure, fine. And then we'll invoke its get side accessor, right? And display that on the screen. And then we'll invoke its get area accessor and display that on the screen. So let's go ahead and test that. All right, so you can see that it works. Now pay close attention to how we declare those inline functions. A lot of students will make the mistake of including the class name and the scope resolution operator within the class declaration itself. You don't do that here. You'll notice that we only have the function declarations within the class declaration. No class name, no scope resolution operator. So what are the pros and cons of doing it this way? You don't have to use inline functions, but you've already seen one advantage. And that is that when you have simple code, you can put everything in one place and you don't have to declare these functions elsewhere. So it can be convenient to put them all in one place. That's one advantage. Another advantage of using inline functions is that your code can execute more quickly. So when you call a function, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the background. And this includes copying a bunch of stuff into a special location in memory known as the stack. And that copying includes items such as the arguments, local variables, memory address, for the function to return to and all of this kind of stuff. So whenever you have to do all that copying, that's gonna take extra CPU time. 
Now, individual function calls aren't going to take up a ton of time, but if you keep making those calls over and over and over and over again, it can add up. So when you use an inline function, those functions don't get called in the normal way. So through this process that we call inline expansion, what happens is the compiler takes a call to an inline function and replaces all of the instances of that call with the code from the function itself. So what that means is that the overhead needed for a conventional function isn't necessary for the inline function, and then this can lead to improved performance. Now, what's the downside then? The downside is that since the inline function's code can appear throughout the program multiple times, the size of the program itself can increase. Now, is this really that big of a deal? Well, it depends. You know, the bigger the executable file, the bigger the download, for example, if somebody needs to download the program. So with everything, it's kind of a judgment call as to you know, what the pros and cons are, what the benefits are. With inline functions, basically faster execution time at the expense of a bigger executable file, and it can make your code maybe a little neater. So now you know how to use inline functions with your classes in C++.